First off, just to clarify, when I say welcome back zero, I mean welcome back to uploading content, not to smash events. Despite me never making that argument, I think it's worth clearing up. <sighs> now why am I back so soon? You may have noticed for a video that's seemingly dedicated only to a Smash player named Zero, there's also a large chunk of that dedicated to a man named Nairo and the general rules of the community. Unlike what some will tell you, this isn't a whataboutism to make Zero look better to reintegrate him into the competitive community. It's actually the opposite. Zero has long lost that privilege and has accepted the outcome. However, Nairo's friends and Collision have staked their reputations on something so easily avoidable, I think it'd be a shame if I didn't nail them myself. Since I need to hold your hand through this entire thing, let's start off with the most basic premise of debate. Defining what the issue is so that we both agree on a starting point. The reason that Zero should still be banned from attending tournaments is because with the information that does exist, we at the bare minimum understand that he had an inappropriate conversation over Skype with an alleged 14 year old girl. There is no evidence or screenshot of any further solicitation now that Zero has walked back his confession. So just sticking straight to the facts, this is the only thing that exists. Would we all agree that no matter what, this warrants excluding someone from a place where they would have access to children. If you said anything but yes, then I have a guy in DC that would love to have your internet history. Judging from the likes on Fatality's tweet, I think it would be fair in assuming that this is the main agreement. Now that we all agree, let's use this as the baseline for the Nairo case. Keep in mind that everything I'm about to say is not only 100% factually sourced, but also publicly available and provided in the document found below in the description. During March of 2017, only three weeks before the alleged assault and blackmail of Nairo, there's a series of three tweets where Nairo and Captain Zack were publicly flirting. One where Zack refers to him as his husband, another where Nairo displays discontent at Zack's public interest in other attractive smashers, and a final one where Nairo appears to display a level of jealousy when Zack uses an endearing tag for the other player we've come to understand was also involved with him. Even though I believe if this meets the bare requirement we just set, let me provide you with the other side's counterargument on the flirtatious talks on Twitter. This is honestly a reach. If this is flirting, then he was also flirting with Mr. R, Void, ADHD, False, etc. He repeatedly and jokingly types with bad grammar to people he was friends with. He was known for this. Despite the fact that this is his brother saying this, and I completely disagree, let's even hypothetically give you this one. I will give you that point. Here's four testimonies on their dynamic, starting from the most mild one. The first one is from Zero, before any allegations were made against him, where he states, Sometime in 2016, I noticed Nairo and Captain Zack hanging out at events. But from what I saw, it was what you would expect from people at events, like them playing together, coaching each other, and things like that. I asked Nairo about it privately, and he just said, He has potential, man. I'm just trying to help him out in Smash as an excuse. Not convinced yet? I thought so. Here's another one from Salem. I assume Zack and Nairo dating was okay for reasons I just mentioned. They even had pictures together and were often together even cuddling at times. So I had no idea of anything. Though because of how things were oddly quiet about their relationship, I did later ask Zack if they were dating, and I was told from him that he doesn't know. As well, he made it sound like Nairo wasn't sure of a relationship or that he was more interested in a girl. I mainly was interested in their relationship because it had the type of celebrities are dating type of vibe. Only later did I learn that the situation situation was something else entirely, as Zack again later told me he made the story up. I believed him foolishly even though I literally saw him laying down on Nairo's lap. Here's Nairo in 4K with Captain Zack laying on his lap. Still not convinced? How about this one from the top 3 player, Tweak? Zack and Nairo had started flirting at this event specifically. When Zack went to go to Nairo's room the night they did sexual things, I specifically told Zack not to go. And he did and did not come back that night. Nairo also knew that I knew, and when he visited me in Ohio, he begged me not to tell anyone. Here's also a screenshot from Tweak where he specifically says he told Zack not to go to Nairo's room and oddly to also not do things with him. Unless Tweak was miswording his reply, that means this escalation was a considered possibility based off Tweak's own observations of their interactions. Now before you go reminding me, the person who wrote the book on this case, 
that Zack is a manipulative, lying piece of shit? Here's how DeBuzz handled Zack's advances. I remember, um, actually, a situation that happened to me that was awkward. It was during Civil War, and this is something else I don't really like talking about. Is I remember Zack tried saying something flirtatious with me, right? And I just pushed him away immediately. I said no, and I stopped that immediately, and that was that. Because I knew that was not okay, and I knew this just needed to stop. And it wasn't, like, continued harassment or anything by him at all. He's a younger kid that was very, uh, open-minded. And I remember saying, no, this is not okay. And I have nothing against him for that at all. Because it was, as the adult, it was my responsibility. Period. Considering that Zack, by DeBuzz's own admission, stopped all progression after denying his advances, I think it would be hard to overlook public tweets of them flirting, a photo, and several testimonies of Nairo undeniably feeding into this inappropriate dynamic. I mean absolutely no offense to DeBuzz, but if he can pick up on this social cue and realize that what's happening is wrong, I see no excuse for Nairo. And finally, there's the testimony from Samsora about their weekend at Prime Saga. Paradin left to go to the bathroom, and Nairo brought up how Ally and Zack was completely different from him and Zack. He also told me to never tell Paradin of what happened between Zack and him, because it would only hurt her. At this point, the only way that you could argue that Nairo didn't flirt with a 15-year-old is to not only deny the public tweets, but the four people who testified would have to walk back their stories, and also the picture of them together would have to somehow be disproven. But until that happens, we far surpassed proving the minimum requirement set in the Zero case that would justifiably warrant a ban from these gaming events. But I promise you, it gets much worse. The strongest defense in Nairo's corner is that he was taken advantage of during his sleep. And because of the initial shock, he froze up as Zack snuck into his bed and began to perform unconsensual sexual acts on him. I'm not even going to bother arguing this, because I don't have to. On the very next day, when Nairo was entirely conscious, there was another instance of sexual activity. The defense is now that Nairo was blackmailed into doing this. I'm trying very hard to be reasonable right now. So let me describe what that situation would look like. After assaulting Nairo in his sleep, Zack then goes up to him the next day and says something along the lines of, if you do not let me suck your dick, I will ruin your career. You're supposed to believe, according to Nairo's account, that he didn't know what was happening to him wasn't his fault until after he got cancelled and got therapy. Honestly, I gotta give it up for the therapist, cause it must have been a pretty quick revelation for him to retain a criminal defense attorney within the same month. I find that very hard to believe, considering that three years prior, he had an angry outburst at Zack for attempting to blackmail him again a month later and Nairo stated that he had had enough of being used. So just to recap, he said that he was blackmailed, said he didn't realize that what happened to him wasn't his fault until after he got therapy, but also was fed up with being blackmailed a month after the incident occurred. Keep in mind that this is what everyone is expecting you to believe, with no exceptions, all at the same time. There's not an infinite number of decisions that Nairo, as an adult, could have made in that moment. His only option, according to them, was to allow it to happen. According to Sam Sora, during Prime Saga 2019, he, Zack, and Nairo all agreed to a cover story in case this little secret ever got out. Nairo proceeded to then ask for my help and make sure the information about him and Zack never escaped. He wanted my help to talk to Tamim and Zack about the situation and make sure they think that the situation was different from Ally and Zack. Zack was always on board with what Nairo was saying to cover the events up, and I just felt confused on what was happening. If we give Samsora's testimony any credence, given his shaky motivation, according to him, this would put Nairo as the one controlling the false narrative that would soon come out. Even though it's hard to believe a proven liar like Samsora, the second the allegations hit the timeline, we could see Nairo's plan being put into action as he and Zack immediately denied all allegations. From Tamim's twit longer, it stated that Nairo called Zack prior to this public denial, and a record of this call is provided. But this only lasted a matter of minutes before Zack would flip the script and come clean with his own twit longer, which is what forced an admission of guilt from Nairo. Which you, again, are supposed to believe was written by an entirely unnamed party. I don't know why this detail would matter in the first place, unless you're meant to believe that Nairo literally told someone else to draft up the most important document of his life without even reading it or approving it whatsoever. 
If you can believe that Nairo has done nothing wrong between the escalation through flirting, the blackmailed oral sex, covering up the story for three years, and denying the allegations until it was impossible to do so, then congratulations! Nairo is innocent. However, if you remove your tier 3 sub, your idolization and blind faith, then I'm sorry to break it to you, but Nairo is most definitely not in the clear here. Sorry, not sorry, but if you're ever provided an ultimatum by a child and you choose sex over the infinite amount of other options, then you have just displayed that you are incapable of making the right choices and should not be allowed to be in these scenarios any longer. I don't give a fuck about therapy or freezing up. This is not a debate. Don't you think that if his 30 page defense was actually foolproof that after getting number one trending worldwide, he would reach out to a Twitch representative and actually get his biggest platform back? Instead, he went to some underqualified tournament organizers and couldn't even get them to say that he's innocent on all charges. Incredible. Now that we're on the same page here, let's go down the list of every high profile individual that actively campaigned to get his Twitch account unbanned so that he could attend tournaments without any problems. The number 38th player, Void. The number 23rd player, Cosmos. His fangirl, Paradin. Lead content coordinator from Panda Global, Alpharad. One of the best melee players in the world, Hungrybox. The number 44th player, Mr. R. The best Pikachu in the world, Esam, the 5th ranked player, Mars. The number 20th player, Wadi. The best player in the world, MK Leo. Popular commentator, Kony. Popular commentator, TK Breezy. Popular commentator, EE Visu. Commentator, Max Ketchum. I'd like to tell you that I'm surprised at the lack of ethical consistency from Smash players, but then I'd be lying. Cause oddly enough, here's also DeBuzz. As the adult, it was my responsibility. Period. There's plenty more where that came from, and I'm not afraid to keep the list going, no matter who you are. There are some prominent children, but it's not their fault. They just see all the people they admire and look up to all peddling the same propaganda that makes them comfortable to jump on board with. I will burn this entire community to the fucking ground. You think I give a shit? You know I don't give a shit, and that's why you're scared. But it's okay. I'll do all the hard work for you. And I won't even bat an eye when all your favorites are gone. Because to me, they're nothing more than an obstacle. A stranger, a line in a script, a new Wikipedia entry. It makes no difference to me. <laughs> Partnering with Nintendo? You shouldn't be allowed to partner with the arcade down the street. I can imagine that a parent would look at this and be absolutely sick to their stomach. This is fucking disgusting, and I'm not gonna sit here while it happens right in front of me. Do you know what it's called when someone who has done something wrong is then defended by their friends with money and influence? Nepotism. This goes all the way to the top of the Smash Brothers hierarchy. Now I ask you, what makes this any different from an actual pedophile ring? I'm not joking. A man with significant power and money that was known to be flirting with a 15-year-old who had two instances of oral sex with a 15-year-old denies any wrongdoing on his part while legally burying the story and is then defended by the most elite members of the community. You all look so fucking stupid right now. And the only reason I gave you a warning in the first place was so I could avoid the embarrassment of being associated. The fact that you guys dislike me so much to the point that you'll create an image of me that disagrees with you is precisely why it's so easy to manipulate you into incriminating yourselves. You should really take a class in objective thought because after the fifth time, it's starting to get really pathetic. If you do not ban Nairo from attending tournaments, I will do everything in my power to make you regret that decision. Because now that you know you're in the wrong, I have zero hesitation in individually calling out every single person that does not publicly disavow his attendance. This is your last and final warning. You guys got unbanned Nairo number one trending worldwide. So here's a trend for you. Ban Nairo.